Hey you, this is Jasim from Code With Me, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to render a Django form manually. So, if you are new to my channel, please do subscribe my channel and click the bell icon near to it. So, without any further, let's jump right into it. Alright guys, so what we are gonna be building is, you know, we have got a template of contact form, the link uh, for which I will provide in the description section. So this is the, the, the complete project, you know, the, the template is, you know, the exact same thing if you look into the preview here, then we got the exact same template, okay. So what we are uh, gonna be doing is, you know, you know, this form is not rendered by Django. It's just a plain, you know, template form, and it has got some CSS like, you know, this shadow thing, and you know, the uh, JavaScript validations. Like, you know, if you check, you know, we have those validations, and if you check in the in our Django project as well, we got the same stuff, same validations. And you know uh, what we'll be doing is you know if if your if the user is you know somewhat crazy and he just disables the JavaScript, then you know if you refresh the page and if we try to submit the form, uh, then what we are getting is you know the validations from the server side. That is, we are getting the validations from the Django forms there in the back end, not uh, from the front end. So. You know, if you type in the name and if you type in any blunt email, then the validation is, you know, very straightforward. We got everything uh, as we are rendering a Django form. So the main idea with the project is, you know, uh, sometimes you get, you know, a, a template uh, and, you know, with every input fields, you know, the form is already set up with, you know, the styling, JavaScript stuff and all those stuff. And, you know, it's very cumbersome to, you know, uh, migrate this to a Django form and to render it, you know, and to give the attributes of, uh, you know, styling and placeholders and all those stuff, you know, it's it's very time consuming. What we have done is, you know, we have uh, just created the same exact form, uh, uh, not a Django form actually, it's just a template form. And, you know, the validations and all those stuffs are done by Django with the help of the Django forms. And, you know, if someone bypasses, you know, like the user bypasses JavaScript and all those stuff, then, you know, the validation is up and running. So now let's move on to the project itself. So I have uh, created, you know, some basic steps, like I have set up a virtual environment and activated it. Then I have created a, 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 an app called the contacts and, uh, you know, I have added, you know, the static files, directories in the settings. Then I have added the base uh, URL here to include the contacts apps URLs. And uh, I haven't set up the URL yet uh, for in, in the contacts app, by the way. So uh, also I have, uh, you know, created the templates, you know, from uh, the, the link for the template I have provided in the description section you may please download that and you know extract it and you know I have saved it as contact.html uh, and I have changed I have set up all those static files here and in the bottom two uh, then uh, yeah that's it uh, yeah I have also set up you know the uh, static files uh, in the uh, static directory here I have set up all those things so that's uh, what is the basic boilerplate is. Now let's uh, write some code. Uh, we'll start with these uh, URLs here. I'm setting a new path, you know, the home page, and uh, it will go to the views dot. You know, I'll construct uh, a class-based view. By the way, I'm using a class-based view. Uh, so I'm providing this as view, then I'll provide a name as contact. Okay, fine. Now uh, I'm going to the uh, views over here and you know I'm creating that exact you know same uh, class over here and I'm extending from the base view class uh, I'm importing this name over here sorry it's dot generic import view now uh, in the in the get request okay in the get request um, uh, getting parameters of you know args and quarks in the get request what I'm doing is you know 
I'm just uh, returning uh, the render function uh, which has the first argument of request and the second argument is the uh, the actual template that is the contact.html uh, it is here in the contacts folder and contacts.html uh, and that's it uh, and now we, we could check you know uh, if everything is working if I do say Python manager or py run server um, yeah we got that you know the basic uh, template page and this is you know the form we get from the template and uh, yeah now we'll move into the post request uh, so before moving into there I'm going to connect.html and I'm setting the form uh, method is equal to post and uh, um, the CSR of token which is mandatory if uh, it is post request then uh, yeah that's very much it and now in the for in the post request okay and the post request you know we have got the exact same arguments args and quarks okay so before writing uh, the logic for the post request uh, what I have to do is you know I have to create a contact form uh, so I'll create that now in the contacts folder let me create a forms.py now uh, uh, from Django uh, dot uh, from Django import forms and I'm creating a class uh, contact form basically inherits from forms dot form and you know we need to look into the fields or what fields we have in the template like we have uh, you know uh, the name email uh, then subject and message so name is equal to uh, models sorry uh, forms forms dot you know uh, I think it's uh, you know a, a text input both three are text input and last one is text area fine so forms dot care field which will yield a text input for us and I'm just providing a max length of uh, 100 uh, then the second one is uh, uh, email okay email is equal to forms uh, dot email email field then uh, that's it and the third one is you know the subject subject is equal to forms dot again a car field of max length uh, this time it will let it be 200 and the final one is you know the message okay the message is equal to again it's a forms uh, dot care field and the widget we should use here is you know forms dot text area okay so um, that's pretty much it you know we we should uh, note that you know these names should correspond to whatever the name provided in the template here okay so both both names should be uh, same okay so we have created a template now now we uh, got uh, to go into the post logic and uh, what I'm doing is I'm um, instantiating a form the contact form uh, which we have in imported so I just imported that and uh, we we have got our post data and we pass it into the uh, instance and now we check if that form uh, is valid and if it is valid I just you know return a redirect for example uh, redirect I have an imported it so uh, I redirect to you know uh, the contact uh, the name uh, like you know let me check yeah contact and now the second is the second thing is you know if the form is not valid I'm just returning the render function uh, request and uh, rendering the same template contact.html but now with the third argument the contacts being the uh, you know the the form with the validation errors fine now uh, if I do uh, save my project you know uh, sorry if I do uh, go to my project and uh, check for the if I uh, submit something um, and if I do submit yeah then everything is working fine okay the post request is coming and it is getting redirected to uh, the same page itself okay 
so that's working now the logic is working now what we need to do is you know we need to get the validation errors if it fails uh, underneath okay underneath each field so uh, what I'm doing is you know uh, in here I'm adding you know we have access to the uh, form uh, in the post request you know in a specific to be specific we have here in the post request if the form is not valid we have access to this form variable so that we could use here and now um, what I'm doing is you know we could say for error in form dot uh, this is name field dot errors so I'm looping through the errors that we have for the uh, name field I'm just doing n4 now what I'm doing is you know I'm using a small tag uh, with a class of uh, let me say text danger so that it it will be like you know in the red color I'm just printing out the error okay uh, so that's it now uh, I'll do the same thing for you know uh, these fields as well uh, the fourth one here and I'll change those names like this one is email then this one is in a subject and the last one is message okay so now uh, if I do check you know uh, the page uh, so uh, let me uh, first you know disable the JavaScript over here now uh, if you're not familiar with the this extension I'll put the link in the description so that you could do the same thing and uh, you know now if I do refresh the page JavaScript is disabled and if I click send email then we got this nice little validations okay perfect now we have some alignment issues here uh, so that I could add uh, you know uh, a, a class of you know uh, let me select all those stuffs and a class of margin left uh, two. so if I do save now yeah it's perfectly aligned so the error is getting so one thing you have to notice is that if I do submit the form again with a value that value is disappeared okay uh, for example once more if I do you know this stuff you know we go we, we, we are not getting those values here so the user have to type it again you know that's not a good practice so what I'm doing is I need that value if you know if there is a validation error Mm, so in order to do that you know what I'm doing is you know in the uh, input uh, tag I'm doing those I'm, uh, I'm fetching those values okay so for that you know I have to first check if form dot is bound meaning you know if the form is you know uh, if the form has data associated with it or we could say if, if this page is rendered uh, in a validation error strategy so if form dot is bound means it will return true if uh, if it is you know associate if if it has uh, data associated with it and you know uh, otherwise it will uh, return false and you know the value probably will not be rendered here so if it is bound then i should say value is equal to then i have access to the form variable form dot name dot value okay fine now i just you know d do the end ifs and I'll just copy this stuff over here and I'll paste you know in here and I'll change this to you know something something is missing I think yeah those double quotes yeah I'll change this to email then the same thing with this subject input uh, form dot subject now in the case of text area uh, I do the same thing if it is bound then here we don't require the value because you know it's you know inside the tags uh, uh, so that's very much it now if I do same project and uh, you know do the step once again with a value for suppose uh, you know if it's like this one yeah I got that value so that's it now everything is working fine and if I do check once more yeah everything is fine uh, so that's what is you know all about the video now uh, a quick tip uh, to use is you know instead of using this regular or the uh, the base view class you could use you know the form view class so you could write you know you could set some attributes and 
uh, the rest of us will be handled by Django itself. So I'm importing this form view. What I'm doing is, you know, I'm setting the form class that is the contact form, uh, which we have imported here from the contacts.forms. Now the next thing is template name is equal to you know contact slash contact.html. Then the third one is success URL. If the you know the, the form is valid, then where where we should go. So um, I'm so I, I need to use you know reverse uh, lazy uh, I believe uh, because I'm using class based views. Um, reverse lazy of you know uh, the name of the URL that is contact. So with this one, let me save the project again, and mm, something goes wrong. Yeah, no. Uh, if I do send email again, yeah, everything works fine. So this is a quick turnaround you could use. You know, instead of all these number of lines, you know, you have just three lines of code. So that's all about the video. And uh, uh, if you have any doubts or suggestions, please do let me know in the comment section. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed to uh, subscribe to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon near to it. And uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.